Good evening and a warm welcome to the news, a national news broadcast on Channel Live. We are ready to bring you the top stories from home and around the world. I'm Thalia Rivadhan. And I'm Dishan Virakon and we start off by taking a look at your headlines for tonight. A new Delta variant found from the country. A booster dose will be given from tomorrow to persons about 20 years with health risks. 200 files related to lands acquired by the Land Reforms Commission displaced. Litro Gas Company says they issue 25% more gas to the market than the daily requirement. Director of the Immunology and Molecular Biology Institute of Sri Javadanapura University, Dr. Chandi Vajivandara said that they have found a new Delta variant from the country. He said that a variant has been found from the northern, north central and Hambantut areas. Recently, we have handed over our latest report to the Director General of Health Services. And in that report, we have highlighted a key finding that we have identified a new sub-lineage which is predominantly seen, seen in Sri Lanka. Earlier, we highlighted that there is another lineage called AY28, which is also predominantly seen in Sri Lanka. And we have the mutations associated with that lineage was created in Sri Lanka and we have exported that virus to different parts of the world. Similar to that, this AY104 gained a sub lineage of delta the parent delta lineage you now we have recently detected that it has given a new name for that sub lineage based on that the characteristic mutations so that's the latest finding and the ay104 sub lineage the infections were predominantly seen in the north and north central provinces as well as in some parts of the southern province compared to that a y28 which was uh, which we have described previously is predominantly seen in the western province so it's about 50 to 60 percent of the infections were responsible with a y28 sub lineage in the western province similar to that a y104 was predominantly seen in the other provinces which i've shown you know in like uh, no, northern province north central province as well as in some parts of southern province if we talk about the the transmissibility and the clinical symptoms of the sublineages, we won't expect much of a difference compared to the parent parent delta variant because you know those are there are few mutations different compared to the parent mut uh, parent virus. So on on in theory, we won't we will not expect any major changes to the transmissibility as well as to the clinical symptoms. However, unfortunately, we don't have the laboratory facility to further test on these, uh, the, the behavior of this virus. So we have uh, sent some of the AY28 sub lineage virus to Hong Kong, uh, one of our collaborating laboratories, which they will, you know, investigate uh, the virus further and we will get uh, an updated report soon from them. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Health has decided to give the booster dose to persons about 20 years with health risks. It is scheduled to be implemented from Tomorrow, persons with low immunity due to an illness or treatment, kidney patients, transplant patients and persons with immunity issues are qualified for the booster dose. They will be given the Pfizer vaccine. The health minister said that the booster dose can be given after one month of getting any vaccine. Giving the booster vaccine for persons about 60 years commenced on the 17th. The booster dose was given today for persons about 60 years at Pitakote Medical Officers Area. A vaccination centre is in operation at St Luke's Church near the Lady Ridgeway Hospital. Individuals about 60 years are given the booster dose at the centre. A vaccination centre is in operation at Vihara Mahadevi Park in Colombo by the Army to give the booster vaccine. Giving the booster dose for individuals about 60 years at Tangol Medical Officers Area commenced today. Another vaccination program takes place at Tangol Urban Council Hall. 29,751,952 vaccine doses have been given to the people under the COVID vaccination program. 15,897,388 have been given the first dose of a vaccine. 30,690,775 have been given both doses of a vaccine. 163,789 have been given the booster dose. 
Minister Kehelia Ramukwella said that everything has been done in connection with the vaccine. 14.5 million have been ordered and there are sufficient stocks. The government is doing everything possible. More than 75 persons have been given both doses. Only two or three countries in the world are at the level where giving the booster dose has commenced. People's behavior plays the other part. France, Russia and Germany have closed. This is the tendency. People have to be committed. If this continues, the economy could collapse. Then there will be no government, colors and parties. Everyone has to experience the results. Five hundred and nine COVID patients were found from the country today. Fourteen thousand nine hundred and seventy one are undergoing further treatment. Three hundred and fifty one have recovered from the virus. Five hundred and twenty five thousand nine hundred and eleven have recovered from the virus so far. The Director General of the Health Services confirmed today 14 COVID related deaths which occurred yesterday. 11 of them are 60 and above 60 years. Three of them are between the ages of 30 and 59 years. Deputy Director General of Health Services Dr. Hemanta Herat says that there is a risk of COVID 19 spreading across the country as people are continuously going on excursions and trips without following necessary health guidelines. He further stressed that the public should be more responsible in their behavior and in order to avoid another COVID-19 outbreak in the country. There are reports from various countries that many countries which have been considered as those who have controlled the disease effectively are now considering to impose travel restrictions and impose lockdowns in different parts due to the increasing number of cases reporting from those countries and that clearly indicates that this disease is of this nature where that success can be maintained indefinitely that is why we also had undergone a difficult time and with very very unfortunate situations where almost now 13 or 14,000 deaths have occurred and over 500,000 cases have been reported. But at this moment, we have come to a situation where relatively low number of cases reported from the country. But this can change at any moment if we are not behaving in a responsible manner. So that is why relaxation of travel restrictions or relaxation of any health guidelines does not mean that the country is perfectly safe. So therefore, uh, we would like to urge everyone, all citizens in this country to act in a responsible manner so that we are not going to create a situation where we are also going to impose any further uh, restriction of traveling or restriction of our social and economic activities. If we are, are to consider any kind of restrictions due to the increased number of cases, first thing that we would consider would be closure of schools and that is a very serious situation because our children have already lost almost two years of their school life and the impact of such loss may not be visible immediately and we do not want to have such things happen in Sri Lanka because the schools will be the first things to close and last things to open. Therefore, it is very important to make sure that we are not going to create a situation where the schools are going to be closed. Now, President Gotabe Rajapaksha venerated the historic Jai Sri Mahabodhya in Anuradhapura this morning. The president who arrived at the sacred place first received the blessings of the chief prelate of the Atamastane, Venerable Dr. Pallegama Siri Nivasathir. Thereafter, the president took part in religious practices near the Jaya Sri Ma Bodhya. The president offered the morning milk food offering to the Bodhya. He exchanged views with the people who had come to pay their homage to the Jaya Sri Ma Bodhya. <laughs>
President Gotabe Rajapaksha also attended the alms giving to the Buddhist monks near the Sandahiru Sire. The religious ceremony was held to bestow merits on the war heroes who died during the three decades of war and to bless all citizens. Minister Chamal Rajapaksha, Defence Secretary General Kamal Gunratna, Armed Force Commanders and a group of people were present on this occasion. Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksha paid homage to Anuradhapura Jai Sri Mahabodhi this morning. The Prime Minister called over on the Chief Prelate of Atamastania, Venerable Dr. Pallegama Sirinivasathero, and received his blessings. Thereafter, the Prime Minister took part in religious practices near the Bodhi. A group of people, including Mrs. Shiranti Vikramasinghe Rajapaksha and Minister Sam Chandrasena, were present on the occasion. Now, today is the fifth day of the budget debate. We now bring views expressed by several government and opposition members. <laughs> Minister Dallas Ala Perumas said that the teacher's salary issue, which lasted for 24 years, became acute when the school children were facing the most difficult time. The President, Prime Minister, Finance Minister, and the Cabinet should be thanked for allocating 30 billion rupees to eliminate the, anom the anomalies by understanding the situation within a short period of nine months. Such situations should not be allowed to occur in the future. Future plans should be made to add the teacher service as an index of development as in developed countries. MP Sarat Fonseca said that Sri Lanka has only the beach to offer the tourists when considering Sri Lanka as a tourist destination. Only persons with limited finances visit the country. 80% of Chinese nationals go to Maldives. Only 20% out of them come to Sri Lanka. MP Dr. Suren Raghavan said that Sri Lanka is not a destination for poor tourists. Swiss Airlines commenced services to Sri Lanka about 10 days ago, giving a signal. The cultural triangle built by Sinhala, Tamil and other communities for 2,500 years of history is famous in the world. Tourists who want to know about that history and civilization visit our country. It has been found by the Committee on the Public Enterprises nearly 200 documents related to acquired lands have been displaced from the Land Reforms Commission. The COP Committee met on the 17th under the chairmanship of Professor Charitha Herat. Attention was paid on audit reports related to 2017, 2018 and 2019 and the present tasks of Land Reforms Commission. The COPE Committee has found that there are no correct details of land acquired and disposed for 50 years. It has been also found that 214 employees recruited to the project to distribute 1 million land deeds in 2018 by the Commission have been made permanent without the permission of the Management Services Department. Chairman of the committee, Professor Charita Herat, pointed out that it has created a wrong precedent to state institutions. He informed the Secretary to the Ministry of Lands, RAA Ranavaka, to conduct an investigation at ministry level and to provide a full report to the COP committee within one month. Nearly 1.7 million acres of lands belonging to the Commission have been assessed for 676 million rupees. Accordingly, value of one acre of land is 500 rupees. The COP committee informed Land Reforms Commission to correct the assessment suitable for the present times. Minister Mahinda Maravira, State Minister Indika Anuruddha, parliamentarians and COP committee members attended the meeting. In the meantime, the Litro Gas Company says that consumers can purchase gas as usual within the next few days. The company issued that they are issuing gas at 25% more than the daily requirement of the market. 
Director Marketing of Litro Gas Company Janaka Patiratna said that they issued more than 700,000 gas cylinders to the market during the last seven days. He said that the company has made arrangements to issue more than 800,000 gas cylinders to the market within this week. He said that the reasons for the high demand of the gas were that their competitor was not having gas, rain and also kerosene oil. All agents and wholesale traders will be able to get their stocks within the next few days. President of International Football Federation Gianni Infantino met President Gotabe Rajapaksha and Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksha this morning at the President House in Anuradhapura. Mr. Gianni Infantino arrived in the country to be the chief guest of the final football match of Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksha Trophy, which was played today at Racecourse Ground in Colombo. He informed the President that the World Football Federation will give its fullest support to popularize the game in Sri Lanka. He pointed out that by popularizing football among school children, they can be disciplined while making them team players. Mr. Infantino said that they would support to popularize football in rural areas and to build a fully equipped football ground in Colombo or its environs. He commended Sri Lanka winning several international football matches recently and the efforts of Minister Namal Rajapaksha to develop sports in the country. The President and the Prime Minister expressed their appreciation for the arrival of the President of the World Football Federation and his delegation. Minister Namal Rajapaksha, President's Chief Advisor Lalit Viratunga and a group of delegation of Mr. Infantino took part in the discussion. Now, the longest lunar eclipse was visible today to people in the US, Australia, Eastern Europe and Eastern India. The eclipse which was closer to a full lunar eclipse is considered to be the longest lunar eclipse after 580 years. It commenced at 11.30 a.m. local time today and lasted for 6 hours until 5.32 p.m. The full lunar eclipse which occurred on 27 July 2018 is considered to be the longest one that took place in this century. It lasted for 1 hour and 43 minutes. This lunar eclipse was not visible to Sri Lanka. It had been clearly visible to North and South America. It had also been visible to Australia, Northern Europe and several regions in Asia. Indian media, media reported that the lunar eclipse was visible in several areas including Arunachal Pradesh, Assam, Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. Such a long period of lunar eclipses has never occurred before. The longest time duration is due to the slow motion of the moon at this time because the moon is orbiting around the earth in an elliptical orbit and when the moon is situated about, uh, I mean between the earth and the moon, the distance is furthest. That is what we call apogee and that when the moon is situated in that position, the moon is moving slow. And therefore, at this ex eclipse, which is occurring at that, uh, when the moon is at apogee, it is the longest duration. This eclipse is a partial eclipse, so that the, the partial duration is about 3 hours and 28 minutes. But the eclipse is visible to most part of the world, from America to Asia, and East Asia and Australia, uh, even to the uh, Eastern Indian part. But it is not visible to Sri Lanka. And after this eclipse, uh, that another 14 days later, on December 4th, there will be a... Uh, solar eclipse. It's a total solar eclipse, but it is visible only to the southern part, Antarctica part of the world, and also to uh, South Africa and Namibia and such countries. And that eclipse is also not visible to Sri Lanka. Nevertheless, that we have uh, some celestial event that can be observed these days during the next few days. If you look at the western sky just after sunset, that you can see three brightest planets: the Jupiter, the Saturn, and the Venus in a straight line in the evening sky till about let's say 8.30 pm and so it is a very uh, beautiful uh, uh, scenario. This period is quite rare with uh, eclipses. For example, there are only two eclipses in 22. In 2022, October 25th, there is a partial solar eclipse that is visible only the tip of the solar eclipse is visible to us. The best place to observe that is also in Jaffna area but to the whole country it is visible. And then in November 8th there is a partial lunar eclipse that is visible to the whole country. Farmers are getting a good harvest from cultivations using only organic fertilizer. 
Our reporters said that organic cultivations are successfully taking place in all areas of the country to provide the people food without toxins. Farmer Punyavardhana of Rambukkana Valagoda is growing pepper, banana and patty using organic fertilizer and local pesticides for five years. Turmeric and ginger have been planted by the sides of the road. A good harvest is expected in few more months. Jayanta Tennakon of Variapula Piyumgal area cultivates paddy, coconut and vegetable varieties successfully using only organic fertilizer. He produces liquid fertilizer using only local raw material. A group of officials of the National Fertilizer Secretariat visited the place to look into the quality of fertilizer. Now a complaint was handed over to the Bribery Commission today in connection with the financial malpractices that have taken place at the National Youth Services Council during the time of the Good Governance regime. Now the complaint was made by a group of officials of Commercial and Progressive Trade Union of the National Youth Services Council. The trade union representatives say that large-scale financial frauds have taken place in programs such as Yutukama and Yoon Pure. Chairman of the trade union Channagun Ratna said that they have requested the subject minister to conduct an impartial inquiry. The Colombo Commercial High Court ordered today to further extend the restraining order imposed on the People's Bank to prevent payments to the local agent and the Chinese company which alleged to have brought a stock of fertilizer with harmful bacteria until the 30th of this month. The order was given after considering a motion filed by the Colombo Commercial Fertilizer Company. The lawyers appearing on behalf of the Chinese fertilizer company files objections when the case was taken up today. Appearing for the petitioner fertilizer company, Additional Solicitor General Susanta Balapetabendi said in court or earlier that the respondent Quindao Sewing Biotech Group Company, which obtained the tender to provide disinfected organic fertilizer, valuing more than 1 billion rupees, to send a stock of fertilizer. The additional Solicitor General informed the court the relevant company through its shipping papers had accepted that there were microorganisms in the organic fertilizer and although they wanted to ship the disinfected organic fertilizer. The additional Solicitor General said that when examining the fertilizer sample sent to the plant quarantine service by the respondent Chinese company, it has been confirmed that there were harmful bacteria and other organisms in the fertilizer. Under such a situation, he charged that the respondent Chinese company had not completed what was accepted in the tender. Accordingly, the additional Solicitor General had requested the court to issue a restraining order to the People's Bank preventing payments to the company or the local agent for the letter of credit issued on behalf of the Chinese company. The Colombo Commercial High Court has ordered to extend the restraining order until the 30th after considering the motion filed by the Commercial Fertilizer Company. Well, that's a wrap of tonight's Prime Time News Bulletin here at Rupa Hain Channel I. And until we meet again next time, do take care, stay safe and good night. Good night.